Hi, my name is Konstantin Baum. I'm a master of wine and I often get the request from you guys that you want to see what's in my cellar. I'm not going to show you everything because that's private. But today I want to show you how to build your own wine collection and how to correctly store your wine. On top of that, I'm going to show you some wines from my collection that you should get for your own cellar too. So let's dive in. When I first got interested in wine, I did not have any money, no space, and I did not know enough in order to start collecting wine. I usually bought my wine at the supermarket or at wine shops and opened the bottles on the same evening. In the following years, I could not start a collection either because I was moving from country to country, was living in flats where I kept my wine in cupboards and under staircases. When we bought this house, one of the reasons I fell in love with it was the cellar. It's cold, dark and humid and therefore pretty much perfect for storing wine. But you do not need a perfect cellar in order to start your wine collection. There's no official definition of what makes somebody a wine collector, but my personal definition would be that a wine collector buys wines for the purpose of building a collection of wines she or he enjoys. A wine collector therefore makes strategic long-term decisions when buying wines as opposed to just buying wines for the next dinner party. But why should you build a wine collection? The most important reason is that you always have wine at home for every occasion. The second reason is that it's fun and it might be a great opportunity to connect with other collectors. And the third reason is that wine appreciates in value over time so you might be able to buy a case of wine today and sell it at a profit in 10 years time in order to buy more wine. I do not plan exactly which wines I'm going to buy each year, but it makes a lot of sense to think a little bit about your approach. Which wines you're going to add to your collection obviously depends on your budget, your space and your personal preferences. You should buy wines that you and your guests like for sure, but you should also have wines for different occasions, at different price points and for different meals. A good collector always has wine at different maturity levels in his cellar. You want to have wines that are too young, wines that are just getting into their drinking window and wines that are right at their peak at the same time in your cellar. Part of collecting wine is also that you will always have some wine that are past their peak which is fine but you need to make sure that the number of bottles is as small as possible. In order to taste the evolution of a wine in the bottle it makes sense to buy not just one bottle but maybe three or a whole case. The ability of wine to age also depends on the storage location but which are the perfect conditions? There's limited scientific research on this topic but most people would agree that a cold, humid and dark area is best. This might also be the case because traditionally wine was made and stored in cellars and we might have just grown accustomed to this storage location for our wine. The short term storage environment is not so important for the quality of a wine unless it's extremely hot or extremely cold. Otherwise all wines that are being sold in supermarkets or in wine shops or that are being transported during winter or summer would be damaged. Wine is not fresh fish, it's pretty stable and fairly resistant to outside influences. In order to find the right location you you should look for the temperature, the impact of sunlight and the humidity in that location. The temperature is the most important factor as the speed of chemical reactions and therefore the aging process increases the warmer the temperatures get. In a cellar that is at 5 degrees Celsius, wines will mature slower than in a cellar that is at 15 degrees Celsius. But a slower maturation is not necessarily a great advantage, especially when considering that most wines are being consumed before their peak. Jancis Robinson puts the ideal storage temperature at between 10 and 15 degrees Celsius. Celsius. I would go a little bit higher. I would say 12 to 17 degrees Celsius as this falls also into the ideal serving temperature for most high quality white wines and most red wines. More important than the exact temperature is the consistency of the temperature. When the temperature fluctuates the volume of the wine decreases and increases pushing and pulling air in and out of the bottle. If you want to know more about this topic check out this video. I'll link it up somewhere up there and you'll find out what the aromatic impact impact of storage conditions actually are. Sunlight is another factor. UV rays can start reactions in the bottle that causes the wine to produce off flavors. This is why most wines are filled into colored glass bottles and why Rödra puts their clear glass crystal bottle into this yellow foil. The other important factor is humidity. Most people would say that the humidity should be at 75% in order to make sure that the corks don't dry out. 
I don't really believe in that because the bottle is filled with a liquid. The wine should keep the cork moist enough in order for it to stay intact and protect it from oxygen. But if you have too much humidity in a room, your labels might get damaged and you might not be able to identify the wine or resell the bottle. For your cellar, you should get one of those devices that track the temperature and the humidity of the cellar 24 seven. If you don't have a cellar, you can always get one of those wine cabinets. They are pretty much perfect as well. They keep the same storage conditions all year round. They're just a little bit more expensive and you obviously need electricity. So which wines should you have in your collection? You obviously need some wines for your immediate consumption, but what makes a great collection a great collection are the wines that are meant to be aged. Age-worthy wines usually have one or more of the following characteristics. They are high in acidity, have high levels of tannins, high levels of residual sugar, are from marginal climates, were fermented or matured in oak vessels, and they come from really high level producers. So let's have a look at a few of them. One wine style that has to be part of every collection and that is often overlooked as an age-worthy wine is champagne or high-end sparkling wines. Sparkling wines can age for a long, long time. This is also because of the CO2 that is bound in the wine itself and they can get creamier, richer and more textured over time. So definitely store some champagne and keep it for a while before popping the cork. Obviously one of the greatest white wines that is meant to be aged is Riesling. If you have one of those big Magnum bottles, the wine will age even more slowly. But the wines from Prim, for example, they can last for decades. And I bought this bottle of Cuvée Friedrich Emil from Trimbach at a restaurant sale and it came at a pretty good price and these wines last forever. Over here in Europe this wine is not so famous but a Hunter Valley Semillon, especially the Tyros Vat 1, is amazing as an age-worthy wine. Those wines keep for a long time, they are very fresh very vibrant, low in alcohol, and they last a long, long time. Sweet ones are a safe bet, even if you're not going for the most high-end, most high-profile producers, but if you're going for great Sauterne, great sweet wines from Germany, or this, a Tokai from a top producer, you will have a wine that is ready to be served at your funeral. You won't be able to enjoy it though. When it comes to age-worthy red wines, Bordeaux is the great classic, no matter whether you're going for the left bank or a right bank producer like Chateau Clinet from Pomerol, those wines can age for decades. And in some cases, old Bordeaux is actually cheaper than the more recent vintages, which is a bit silly, but it's also a great opportunity for you to stock up on some mature red wine. Burgundy might not always appear like it's a great wine for aging, but it can age gracefully and the wines get really velvety, rich and luscious. But you should definitely go for the better producers, producing wines from the great sites like this Grand Cru from Clos de Vougeot. Nebbiolo from Barolo or Barbaresco can be just beautiful if you put it away in the cellar. When they're young, they're sometimes a bit too grippy, a bit too harsh, but all that gets more mellow and round with time and the wines get really, really complex and are just as beautiful as great burgundies, for example. So definitely stock up on some of this. I'm a Syrah lover, so I really enjoy drinking aged Syrahs. They get really wild and meaty over time, like this 2001 Cote Roti, which is, by the way, wrapped in cling film in order to protect the label from mold. But I'm not going to resell this bottle. I'm definitely going to drink it and I will enjoy it. Fortified wines offer great value for money. This bottle of Madeira will last a century, probably. And this is a small bottle of vintage port. I sometimes can't manage to drink a whole bottle of port. I'm sorry. And for those cases, I use those small bottles because they will serve two to four people depending on how thirsty you are. And they are great value for money too. So this is something you should definitely have in your collection. So thank you for watching from me and my friends here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, which is the bottle of wine that is in your cellar and that you're really waiting to open? Please comment down below. I hope I see you guys again soon. Until then, stay thirsty. Thank you.